so now this videos will be about the uh, fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups so we get directly into the theorem every finite abelian group is a direct product of cyclic groups of prime order prime power order moreover the factorization is unique except for rearrangement of the factors so since a cyclic group let us say g is a cyclic group and let us say that g has order n so g will be isomorphic to some zn so do not forget by hypothesis g is cyclic so the fundamental theorem of finite abelian group groups um, shows that every finite abelian group G, every finite group, abelian group G, will be isomorphic to one group that will take the form Z P1 to the power of N1 direct sum Z P2 to the power of N2 plus direct sum z p q to the power of n k p uh, p k p k to the power of n k where this p1 p2 so the p i's all these p's um, will be distinct uh, uh, prime numbers and this um, let us say pi to the power of ni will be uniquely determined by g so when we write uh, when we write a group in this form when we write a group in this form this is called the determining determining the isomorphism of the determining the isomorphism class of G so we are going to see now the isomorphism classes of abelian groups so the isomorphism classes of abelian groups so the fundamental theorem is extremely powerful um, and as an application we can use it as an algorithm for constructing all abelian groups of any order um, so we are going to look at groups of order p to the power of k where p is a prime and let's say k is minor or equal to 4 okay just to check a couple of okay so if we have a group I'm going to put the order of a group here let us say the group has order p so what is the possible product direct products for g well it will be zp right what about p squared well p squared can be uh, isomorphic to zp squared or it can be also isomorphic to zp direct sum zp what about p cubed well that will be isomorphic to z p cubed 
and it's also isomorphic to z p squared direct sum zp or uh, zp direct sum zp direct sum zp so we let's do it till four okay so p to the power of four so if the order of the group g is p to the power of four that will be isomorphic to z p4 it's all, always isomorphic for instance z p to the power of three it's always isomorphic of z to z p3 and z p direct sum z p direct sum z p that's for sure then you have to check here the direct sums okay so this one or uh, z p3 direct sum z p or z p squared uh, direct sum z p squared or um, z p squared direct sum and now this I can do z p plus z p right yes okay or do I have any other z p 3 z p oh yes the, the last one right this one so z p direct sum z p z p one two three four okay so in general there is one group of order p of k p4 for each set of positive integers whose sum is k okay so um uh, it is particular particularly useful at least for me uh, to remember that um, or should I say this for instance if you have a direct sum b this would be isomorphic to a direct sum c but this will happen if and only if b is isomorphic to c okay so for instance here when i was here it was for p to the power of four right so this one was obvious this one is pretty obvious too and then this one and suddenly i was not certain what to do here but I looked here so I can keep this one here this one I can keep here and what about this one well I look here and this one is isomorphic to this one so I can replace this one by those two okay and since this is true for the same reason I can do this okay um, I think this is uh, a reliable a mnemonic for comparing external direct products is the this this sort of cancellation uh, property okay so now we move to a a to the problem of constructing all the billion groups of a certain order n so not only not only for the order two three or four but for any order so what we do is we begin by writing n in prime power decomposition so we pick n and we decompose it in prime powers 
what should I call this? K and K. Okay. So next, individually for all the billion groups of each order, for instance, we pick P1 and 1, and then P2, etc., and so on. We do the same as we did earlier. Okay. And finally, we form all possible external direct products of these prime powers. Okay. An example. Let us give a huge number. One, one, seven, six. Okay, you can decompose this number in prime powers. So you can check that this is two, two, two times three times seven times seven. Okay, so this is eight, right? So the what are all the decompositions? Z8, um, direct product, uh, I call it direct sum, I think, well, you, 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 you'll check that, okay, direct product to Z3 and Z49, right, Z49, or 2 times 2 is 4, so, Z4, direct product Z2, direct product Z3, Z49. Okay. Please check. So, 8349, 8349, 4, 2, 3, 49, 2, 2, 2, 3, 49, 8, 3, 7 times 7, 2, 2, 2, 3, 27. This is the, uh, an obvious one too. So, if we are given any particular abelian group G of this order, 1176, the question we want to answer about G is which of the preceding six, one, two, three, four, five, six isomorphism classes represents the, st the structure of G. So, considering a G where the order of G is this this beast here. So, okay, again we can consider this question by comparing the order of the elements of G with the order of the elements in the six direct products, since it can be shown that two abelian groups are isomorphic if and only if they have the same number of elements of each order. So, we will check the order of the elements. For instance, we could determine whether G has any elements of order 8. Okay, we go to G and check if there is any element of order 8. If there is an element of order 8, then G must be isomorphic to uh, if G as an element of order 8 so G there is a G in G such that uh, G to the power of 8 we get the identity okay this how many times do we have to perform the, the operation in order to get the identity so there is an element of order 8 right uh, So, 
which one of these G could be could be isomorphic. Uh, this one and this one, right? The first, this one and the fourth, right? These are the only ones who have elements of order 8, okay? So if G has this order 1176 and has an element of order 8, okay, it cannot be isomorphic to, to this one, for instance. No element of order 8 here. Okay? And now you could ask, so, how am I going to decide? I know that G has um, order 1176 one, one, and it has an element of order 8. So it can be only isomorphic either to the first one or to the fourth one. How am I going to decide now? Well, now you look here and you check if G has an element of order 49. Not hard to see, you see, because the higher order uh, elements you can get here is 8 and 7s, right? The highest one is 8. Okay. So you check the order of an element and if it it goes over 8, okay, so it should be 49. You check if the order is 49 and then it will be isomorphic to this one. If that's the case, of course. Okay, and we finish with a quick uh, corollary about the existence of subgroups of Apelian groups. If M divides the order of a finite Abelian group G, then G has a subgroup of order N. So, um, say G is cyclic and the order of G is N. If M divides N, so M divides the order of a finite abelian group G, so M divides the order of a finite abelian group G. Uh, if this is true, so there will be a subgroup H of G such that the order of H equals M. Um, it's very nice the algorithm to find yeah. well the thing is that's what the corollary says if M divides the order of finite abelian group G then G has a subgroup of order M uh, so you know that there will be an H of order a H subgroup of the cyclic finite group G um, there will be a subgroup of order M. How to find it? Well, that's a, a algorithm I can show you in other videos. I'll, these algorithms are would take very long, so I'll do it in another series.